The time has just about arrived. We are on the precipice of a new journey here at NHL Gamer. ECL 2022 is about to kick off with our winter tournament. Hello everybody, Tuki here, back once more. One of the voices of the elite division here at NHL Gamer, back again for another season. Very excited to see the twists and turns that await us here. I cannot wait to be alongside the likes of one Mr. Sim for the win yet again. Another season here for us, and we are incredibly excited to get going. Today's video is, of course, as always, that little bit of extra content that we try to push out to begin that hype for a, a new season. Today, we are going to go over the predicted standings, one through 16, as voted on by the captains of our elite division team. So I am very excited to reveal to you guys what they think might just happen this season as well. We're gonna kind of go through every team and give a little bit of an overview. And of course, so much has changed. Again, I mentioned it. You can find it on NHLGamer.com. Of course, the community tab is there as well, as you see on your screen. Of course, two seasons, one champion is the theme. Season information is there, of course, for everybody. And again, a big shout out to our sponsors. Back with us once more, Kovalon Lakritzi, our friends at Wilhelm sticking with us, and a shout out to Xbill, who have joined up this season as well. We have season previews up for everything. There is this pro preview here that you can see a tremendous job done by some of the fantastic people that we have working with us here at the site. Again, of course, you already know it's NHLGamer.com. Make sure to check it out. If you haven't already, our pro season is already underway, and our elite season begins on January 10th. It'll be at about 2 p.m. Eastern, 1945 CET over at twitch.tv forward slash NHL Gamer. But as mentioned, we have a lot to get to today. We are going to be talking about the 16 teams of the Elite Division, and again, where the captains within the Elite Division think these teams will reside. So I want to get right down to business. Let's talk about the first team on the agenda, the team that is projected by said captains to finish last, Jure Gordon Hockey. Now they have had an interesting time as of late, I will mention in terms of their average finish within the voting. Uh, at about 14.16 uh, was their average finish amongst the voting, as high as 12th and as low as 16th, which is where they find themselves here. They earned promotion from Pro Division last season. They were the champions, or at least the surviving team from the tournament portion of our Pro Division, defeating former Elite Club Team Leisure 4-2 in the Pro Finals. And as we get a look at this particular team, we talk about the arrivals, including the likes of Mumsy, who we'll talk about in a little bit. They also added in a depth option in Awade. And hey, this is a great opportunity for me to be able to say some of these names and be corrected if need be. It wouldn't be the first time Sin and I have been corrected, but hey, we try our best. Uh, Awade, though, 27 points in 28 games for Oscar Sham last season in light division. He's never played above light, not projected in their primary lineup. In terms of departures, they lose one of my favorite names, Clumpy Indiana. Had six points in 12 games last year. He moves on to Armada Hockey in our light division. And as we get a look at this team, we can start off in talking about Sorso, who is up for contention for Rookie of the Year, as a lot of these guys will be. A rookie uh, is Sorsa, 18-7-5 last season with an 820 save percentage in pro. Not bad at all. Of course, you want to be over that 800 save percentage marker, regardless of what division you are in. So Sorsa is a name to certainly pay attention to. And we look at the defense as well. We'll start off with Sveti the right side defender 17 points in 21 games last season for Jir Gordon and then the captain on the left one of the best names in the game it is Jungle Donk had 21 games played last season and I believe 17 points as well that might have actually been a mistake but regardless uh, capable defenders we'll actually take a look at Jungle Donk and the stats from last season and no it was yeah see that was the pro stats 29 points in 30 games what are the odds that the uh, playoff stat line ended up being the same. What are the odds of that? But yeah, a big, 
uh, amount of anticipation for me to see what this particular defense can do. And of course, the goaltending as well. All three players I've mentioned so far are rookies to our elite division. And then you get to the forwards. We start off uh, with someone who's actually up for comeback player of the year. He's back after a bit of a break. It is Amadi. Last played in the elite division in ECL 9 with Miracle, where he had 22 points in 16 games played. Last year was Jerry Gordon, 40 points in 22 games. So a capable scorer, to say the least. On the left-hand side is Strumpan. Nine ECL seasons. This will be their first in the elite division. A long, long journey to get here. Had 57 points in 30 games with Sheer Gordon in pro last year. And that brings us to the center. The new addition in Mumsy. Another player who might be in there for comeback player of the season by the time it's all said and done. Replacing Lord Stanley. As the team's primary center, Stanley had 47 points in 28 games last year. Mumsy, though, a season one original, last played in Elite in ECL 8 with Synergy Hockey, had 22 points in 28 games at that point in time. Last played in ECL 11, though, sat out last year. Last played in ECL 11 in the Pro Division with Lexans, had 39 points in 28 games. So you look at the players here, capable scorers, but it's interesting that the captains, again, kind of view them as a team that have a lot to prove. And again, as voted on by the captains, they are in that automatic relegation spot. But for a team that came up from pro last year, they will certainly be looking to prove themselves. That moves us on to the team that the captains have finishing in 15th. And it is another new addition, HV71. Uh, brand new sponsored team, an average finish of 14.08, so not getting that much more credit than Jure Gordon did. Highest finish projected was 11th. They had that twice, so that helped out the rating a little bit. But uh, 16th, you know, 16th position, three times they were projected there, so they had just that slightly higher average. They did earn promotion from pro. They defeated Yippie Voskala of all teams, 4-1 to one in a relegation series. Still... Absolutely stunning. I'll try to talk a little bit about Yip Vasco a little bit later on because that is still one of the craziest stories that we've had in recent memory here uh, in the ECL. But in terms of talking about HV71 specifically, the only arrival is the forward and Metaliska who joins up with the team. The only departure was Pele, who only played 10 games last year, had five points. They have moved on to IF Norland in the core division. We'll start off looking at the goalies first. Kofalainen is there, someone else who is up in rookie contention. 22-8-0 record last season in pro division, but just a 7-7-5 save percentage. And needless to say... You're going to want slightly higher numbers uh, now that you are in the elite division. We look at the defensive side, right-hand side. We're going to go with a Puta King. I'm not entirely sure. And I also have learned that certain words can get me in trouble. Is that one of them? We'll find out. But still, a 20 games played, 15 points last season. A rookie to the elite division. As his, his projected defense partner, who's actually projected as a forward here, but it is a Zuppe who is another elite rookie again. 41 points in 30 games last season, but as uh, told to me by the captain of the squad here, Dembski, he is projected to start on that left-hand defensive spot. We move over to the forwards. We'll start off with the right wings and a new addition in Mataliska, who comes over from Sack Brothers in Pro Division. Had 46 points in 26 games and is as well an elite rookie. Left-hand side, it is Arubatas who had 64 points in a full 30-game season last year, is up for comeback player of the year. Last played in Elite in ECL 11 with Feriastad. Had 23 points in 26 games that season. One of the players, Sin and I, were very, very surprised to see drop down to a lower division. Very much looking forward to seeing what they can do upon their return. And that brings us to the captain of the team in Dembski, also up for comeback player of the year. Last played an elite in ECL 8 with Bucketeers. Had 27 points in 30 games, 54 points in 30 games last year in pro with this very team, the captain Dembski. And again, you may have seen it. There's an interview up on the website 
with him. So much like Jer Gordon aiming to avoid relegation, a lot of rookies in the lineup. But I have to say there's probably even more pressure that I would you know look towards with HV71. Yes, Jer Gordon ended up winning the uh, pro tournament last year. But HV71 knocking out Yippie Voskala, we know that they can, t- you know, they can take out some good teams, even though Yip was off last year. So a lot of pressure for them moving forward. And that'll bring us to the team that is projected to finish 14th in one of our relegation battle spots. The second year of their tenure here in the Elite Division, the ZSC Esports squad, the Lions Zurich are here. Uh, an average finish in the voting of 1408 as well. So dead even with HV71. However, their highest projection was ninth compared to the 11th spot for HV71. Hence, we have ZSC in 14th. They were projected by at least two captains to finish 16th. That's a little bit rough. They did finish 12th last year, though, in the Elite Division. A great job to get promoted for the first time and then avoid having to fight for their survival. In terms of departures, they lose Timote, who played 22 games and had 26 points. He moves on to Belize in light division. Ali KN, two games played, one point moves on to Hyperion in our lower tiers. And in terms of arrivals, I dangled you out, Mr. Wagner is back but let's start off talking about the man between the pipes first that is chich one of my favorite names to get wrong constantly but eventually hopefully learn to get right full 30 game season for him last year but just a 756 save percentage however i do think he's better than that sin thinks he's better than that he might have been one of the most unlucky goaltenders last year with some of the goals given up Absolutely brutal. I expect a better season from him this year. We'll move on to the right defense. Haldim is back. Had eight points in 24 games last season. Tony on his left had 29 in 30 games. He was the team's leading scorer for a lineup that had quite a bit of adjustments. We move to that right wing side. Berkadal is back. Had 16 points in just 14 games last year. And on the left... We talked about him already. We mentioned him at least. I dangled you out is back. Coming back to the team as well, he returns to ZSC after spending ECL 12 in light division with that champion, No Rex Gaming. Shout out to one of the best logos in all of esports. Had 50 points in 28 games last year. He does have prior elite experience as well, hence being up for comeback player of the year. And then we get to the center. It is Captain Original Sven, a very prolific goal scorer under the NHL Gamer umbrella, had 29 points in a full 30-game season last year in ECL 12. Freeman takes a bit of a backseat, which honestly is a little bit surprising. He was a pretty solid player for them last year. 23 points in 28 games. Uh, You know, I dangled you out as somebody that can step up and fill those shoes, but intriguing to see just what the offense looks like for Zurich this season. But again, our captains have them in 14th. That brings us up to the team that we have in 13th. They finished 13th last season, Northern Ascendancy, an average ranking of 13.25. Their highest voted position was 11th. Two captains had them there. Their lowest was 16th, and two captains had them there. We have seen some changes, some departures, Ibiz is gone, one point in six games last year. He moves on to Company of Geeks, one of our lower divisions. Tunkelia is gone, 34 points in a full 30-game season. He moves on to Reality Check in our pro division. And Fopa Toflin is also gone, 34 points in 30 games. He has moved over to Feriastad, who we'll obviously be talking about in a little bit. In terms of arrivals, Tonski is here, Dillinger, and Sada Poika. And we'll talk about all of them, but of course, let's start off with the goaltending first, as I like to do. Give the nods to the goalies. Uh, it is Supreeks back again with this squad. 10, 15, and 5 record last season with a 797 save percentage. And this is a goalie who is capable of better than that. And if he is able to perform at his, uh, you know, to the best of his abilities, we could see Northern Ascendancy push for a playoff spot rather than being projected to potentially have to fight for their survival in the elite division. On the right-hand side, we see Tonski. 13 points in 30 games last season as the captain of Rusty Blades, who are unfortunately no more, but a very experienced defender 
at the elite level. He is alongside Sparka Romberg, another very experienced player at the elite level, had 19 points in a full 30-game season last year with the same club. On the right-hand side, one of the other new additions is Sada Poika, had 35 points in 30 games last year with Tunnel Vision. On the left-hand side is Dillinger, who also comes over from Rusty Blades with 23 points in a full 30-game season. And then Martindale, as the captain of the squad, 24 points in 30 games. So, you kind of look at this lineup and say... Who's going to break out? Who's going to be that dominant scoring threat? Because if you go off of the stats from the prior seasons, scoring could be a little bit of an issue, but they could be a very tough team to crack when you have them pinned in their defensive zone. So I'm intrigued to see what they can do. Teahola as well is somebody that is a really solid depth option if he is indeed available to play for them. Uh, simply put, though, they made the playoffs the year before. A down year last season. We'll see what they can do in the winter portion of ECL 22. But I, I can't say I totally disagree with the captains here. Uh, they're one of those teams where it's like, okay, we know you have that potential. But are you going to be able to maximize that? And we will find out. Team number 12 on this list, Conquer Gaming. The former Kova Esports team, a 12.0 average in terms of the voting. Highest placement voted on was 8th. So two captains projecting them to make the playoffs. Their lowest placement, 16th. So it's a complete toss-up there. They did finish in 15th last year season. In terms of departures, they lose Fincere and Goal, finished with a 1-6-3 and record, just a 7-68 save percentage, so mm, not, not, no disrespect to Fincere, but he didn't have a very good season last year. He moves on to reality check in Pro Division. Sockham on the defensive side, 17 points last year in a full 30 games. He moves to Yipivaskala in our Pro Division. Pottsburg as well, another one of their defenders, 25 points in 30 games. He moves on to IQ and R. Ginu, four points in two games. He also moves on to IQ. But who are the arrivals with this team? Well, we have Yalkin. We have Yukis as a new addition. Uh, Nixu as well, although he is projected to be a bit of a defensive option. The Medias, the Madias. I'm going to go with the Medias. And we also have Kihan as another new addition. Monkeyhead in goal, our first featured player, 8-11-1 record last year, a 738 save percentage. He is better than that. How much better will he be than that this season? I don't know, but he is a better goaltender than those numbers. The defensive side, right D, is going to be new acquisition and a rookie to the elite division in Yalkin. Had 51 points in 30 games with Royal HT in our light division last season. And lefty, another rookie, it is Yukis, who is also there. 29 points in 28 games for Sokoman Sedet in our pro division last season. So two rookie defenders, a little bit scary. You don't really know what you're going to get there. And then for the forwards, we have another rookie. It is Kihan, who had 55 points in 24 games with Sokoban Sedet as well. He also joins from that club, but still 55 points in 24 games. Keep an eye out on Kihan this season in that rookie race. I'm, I'm calling that right now. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, Vera is uh, back as well. Vera with 34 points in 30 games last season. And then you get the Medias, another rookie. Uh, played with Hawaii Hockey and Pro Division last season, 43 points in 30 games. So obviously, it's a complete toss-up, as shown by the captain's voting. A lot of rookies and a lot of inexperience, but I really like the potential of the two forwards that they brought in. Zip Player, the captain of the squad, isn't even going to be a full-time lineup member, judging by the early lineup that I was handed, the projected lineup there. So I, I again, have to agree with the captains. I don't think anybody can properly assess what to expect from Conquer Gaming this season, but man, if that does not make this upcoming season that much more exciting. Team number 11 on the list is the newly 
reformed, or at least newly rebranded, Roots Gaming. Roots back in the scene. An average finish of 11.91. Their highest ranked finished 8th. Their lowest was only 14th. Two teams voting them in 14th. But the former Boxing Elite, they are here in the Elite Division, now under the Roots name. After winning a tournament, they earned their spot in an Elite Division qualifier after the uh, dissolved Sawo Esports, the disbanding of Sawo Esports. So uh, a big opportunity here for them. They did lose in the Pro Division semifinal to the eventual champion in Gordon last year, yet... Here they are in 11th compared to Jer Gordon in 16th. So, you know, you, you got to view that a certain way, I do suppose. In terms of departures, though, a lot has changed about this team. They lose Dest Eagle, 25 points in 30 games last year, has joined Wanna Cry in our pro division. Great name. Yomsky, who had four points in 10 playoff games, also moves on to Wanna Cry. Svetzhenko. 27 points in 30 games, may still be with the team, and indeed is, actually, since I wrote this script, uh, they were not currently listed on the team roster, and since, there you go, they are official, so no longer as a departure. And again, 27 points in 30 games, I'll be intrigued to see how much ice time they get this season. In terms of new additions, they have in goal, Yontes, I do believe, uh, would be the proper pronunciation for that, Nordsman and Vody both join as well. Of course, we'll start off with the goaltenders. The projected starter is Mehis. We will see the Mehis. Uh, we'll see if that ends up being the case. Yontes likely to get some starts from my understanding. Uh, Mehis, though, we want to highlight here, uh, somebody else who's in the running for comeback player of the year. Four prior seasons of top flight experience last with a miracle in ECL 9. An 807 save percentage, though, in 30 games played last season. Again, not all that bad. So I, you know, again, I can see the the logic behind bringing back this player to the elite division and seeing what they can do. Defensively, you have a Vody joining in. A rookie of the year candidate had 19 points in 30 games last season with Bjerklevin Esports in our pro division and has gone from Neo in season 10, Light in season 12, Pro in, or excuse me, Light in season 11, Pro in season 12. So basically has completely rised up the charts uh, every season. We'll see what Vody can do now in our elite division. And Nordsman. Another player from the now dissolved Rusty Blade squad. Five points in 18 games last year with that relegated club. For the forwards, we start off with a Rookie of the Year candidate in Sompi. Uh, same story as the captain, as really all three of these forwards will have, but Sompi nine points in six games in the regular season last year, so didn't play a ton until the playoffs, but at 18 points in 17 games in the postseason, so keep an eye out for them. Left wing is Limu, 59 points in 30 games last year. Another player where I'm going to say, keep your eye out on this guy might just be able to surprise a few people. It's been one of my favorite things to do over the past couple of years is to look at that rookie race. We have had some phenomenal rookies over the past couple of years. I mean, we've been doing this long enough, Sin and I, that we've seen the rise of Nikki Dangles. We've seen the rise of Faze. Last year with Piku Roger for Goons, I'm always excited for the rookie race. Limu is in the conversation, and as is the captain, uh, the captain, I should say, in Lexa, leads his team into the Elite Division after just two seasons. ECL 11 in light division, ECL 12 in pro. Has had impressive performances in the FCL as well and posted 68 points in 30 games last year. Dare I say all three of these guys could be candidates for rookie of the year, at least in that, you know, really kind of final three voting stage. We'll see what happens. So you look at a team. Didn't expect to be an elite. They're here now. Clearly, they're being shown a good amount of respect by the captains that are in this elite division. Who knows what might happen? I am excited to see what the newly rebranded Roots Gaming can do. And that brings us to the team in 10th. Get ready for a little bit of controversy, perhaps, as we have IQ. An average rating of an 891. Their highest projected finish, 5th place. That was by two different teams. Their lowest was 13th. So again, a team that is very much viewed in the mix, could make the playoffs easily, could just miss out. They finished 8th last year. They lost in the first round to Philadelphia in six games. In terms of departures in goal, they lose Ramsey, 
uh, or Ramzil, I do believe, but a 1-2-1 and one record for them with a 7-14 save percentage. Eh, they've gone on to H-Reds. Uh, Tapu as well had eight games as a utility player. They've moved on to the Phila Academy in light division. And in terms of arrivals... A lot of people is the best way to put it. They have added Teme and Goal. They have added Pottsburg. They have added, uh, I believe it's Ica. Oh God, I tried. I tried to get it right the first time and I couldn't do it. Icavalco. We got there. They have also added Arjinu and Yergali. A lot of new names for this particular team. Starting off in goal as we do, it is Teme that we want to talk about first. A player that could be in the comeback player of the year conversation. Sat out ECL 12, last played with Yippy Voskala in ECL 11 in our elite division. Had an 8-4-2 record with a 756 save percentage. And in FCL 2021, with IQ, 16-0 record in the regular season with an 833 save percentage. So... May have been gone for a little bit, but Teme could still be uh, one of the premier goaltending talents in this elite division. Keep an eye out on them. Defensively, right D, we have Pottsburg, who had 25 points in 30 games last season for Kova in our elite division, of course. Nico, who was on the team last year, sticks around 18 points in 30 games last year. And then we get to the forwards. Now, right wing is projected to be split between Jinu and Yergley. Yergley with 53 points, though, in 30 games last year for Goons. This is a huge pickup for them. And for Jinu, as mentioned, just four points in two games for Kova Esports, but does have previous elite experience beyond this, although they've never played a full elite season. So at the very least, you look at Yergley as the primary person you probably want on that right-hand side. A tremendous pickup. Left wing side, we have Niepi, the captain of the team. 35 points in 30 games last year. And then Icavalco. We got it. It's going to be one of those names. It's going to take a couple of times to, you know, get into rhythm with it. But you ready for this? 96 points in 30 games with Royal HT in our light division last season. Talk about someone who was a bit too good to be in our light division. Uh, they have previously played in our elite division as well in ECL 10. Only played four games, but that does mean that they have qualified for a comeback player of the year status. And ECL 9 in elite division, though, they also played there with almost famous 40 points in a full 30-game season. So an experienced player for sure. I love the pickup for IQ. And uh, I got to be honest here, looking at this team, man, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm, I'm kind of thinking they've been undersold a little bit here to be on the outside looking in, but there's some very, very talented teams, to say the least, when it comes uh, to the Elite Division this year. And that brings us to team number nine. And you want to talk about the face of this league, of this division changing. Massive changes have taken place if you haven't been able to follow Team number nine, Feriastad. An average of an 8.83. Highest placement was fourth. Lowest was 11th, as voted on by three captains. They finished in fourth last year in our elite division. Lost to Philadelphia in a sweep in round number two. And where do we start with this? Goodness gracious. In terms of departures on defense, Laminens is gone. 43 points in 30 games. He moves on to Granite Gaming. Furion, his defense partner, 34 points in 30 games. Gone to Granite. Antonio Madden on the right wing, 54 points in 30 games. Gone to Granite. And a depth option in Frampa. Uh, one point in two games has moved on to the Vexio Lakers in our pro division. In terms of acquisitions, we have Mr. Nipsley on defense, Gustafson as well, Sebi Larson, and Fopa Toflin. So a lot of changes to this FBK team. We'll start off in goal, though, ever-present. It is McSavid. He has gone nowhere. One of the better goaltenders in the elite division, to say the least. Last year had a great, great record of, I, I do believe, goodness gracious, what was that record? We have a we have a little bit of an error. That's okay. Errors happen when you have to compile this much information. Yeah, it was 28 and 2, not 28, 8 and 2. So a bit of a typo on my part, but that's all well and good. Uh, still a 794 save percentage, not quite to the heights that he is capable of. We'll see what he can do this year. 
Right defense, Mr. Nipsley comes over. 29 points in 28 games with Sawo last year, certainly. Not what any of us expected, really, to see Sawo dissolve this close to the start of a new season, but a good acquisition for FBK after losing the talent that they lost. And Gustafson uh, won't actually be playing. Lefty is going to be Sebi Larson. 16 points in 18 games. Come on, comes over from Vesa Pampa, now known as Granite Gaming. So some interesting kind of changes there between those two teams. Right-hand side, right wing, it is Fopa Toflin. 34 points in 30 games last year with a Northern Ascendancy. On the left-hand side, he almost needs no introduction. It is Afe, 66 points in 28 games last year. A premier talent in the Elite Division. And the center, the captain, it is Malin, 60 points in 30 games last year. The outlook for FBK, I have no idea. It is one of the more shocking shakeups. It's been a trend here that I've noticed in the last season or two. Again, Sin and I have had the luxury of being a part of NHL Gamer for a couple of years now and have been able to cover quite a few seasons as a result. And I don't feel like these massive changes were as prevalent as they are recently. And the departure of the group moving from FBK, a team that you could argue weren't that far off from really being able to maybe get into a championship situation and to have this drastic of a change, we're going to have to wait to see where that leaves FBK. And obviously, we don't you know, we haven't covered where Granite is yet, but obviously the captains have Granite ahead of FBK. I am sure that is going to make for a very motivated uh, leadership group on this team for Feriestad. So again, they are in eighth, and our team, our last team that is outside of the playoff structure, with that, we get to move on to our playoff teams. So with that, let's get down to it. Team number eight, YMCA esports in terms of departures and this is a big one timothy has left 45 points in 26 games last year he returns to deadly phantoms formerly known as team leisure in our pro division they also lose mozia as a forward who had 46 points in 29 games he moves on to tunnel vision here in Elite. In terms of additions, though, they have added Rimpe, and they have also added Sokolo up top. With the goaltenders, it's one of the names that I heard six different pronunciations for last year. Is it Ben? Is it Benu? Is it Ben-a? Is it Benny? b b b benny Who's to say? He is the man between the pipes, though, for YMCA, and he was one of the better goaltenders in the Elite Division last year, hands down. 16-12-2 record, maybe not ideal, but an 8-29 save percentage. If he can have a repeat performance, I can't even already disagree with the idea that YMCA would make the playoffs again. We'll move over to the defense. You have Julius, who did not play in the majority of his team's games last year, he had 14 games played with 10 points. He will be looked at as more of a starter this year. And on the left, a nomination for Comeback Player of the Year. After sitting out ECL 12, Rimpe is back. Last played in ECL 11 in our elite division with Gotham Knights, where he had 26 points in 30 games. So a capable player to keep your eyes on there. Right-hand side, we already mentioned him. It is Sokolo. Again, another impressive point performance. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands there, but it's fine. 42 points in 30 games with Tunnel Vision. On the left-hand side, the captain, JM, 54 points in 30 games. Crucial to see him continue that type of output. And Angel Kuru will be the starting center of the team. Had five points in five games last year. Has not played more than eight games in a single season in the last two years. So we need to see uh, that consistency out of him. They obviously have some depth that they could work with, but Angel Kuru projected to be there. So for YMCA, some major changes. Uh, you know, again, they made the playoffs last year. They finished in sixth. They surprised us all with how good they were. They lost to Havu in round one in five games. I think with some of the changes, obviously, you would kind of expect them 
to be able to make it back to the playoffs. Um, again, you know, talking about that average, the 8-3-3 average, so they were recently, you know, or I want to say recently, they were decently above FBK, who, of course, more recently finished above them in the standings. Highest projection of 6th and the lowest of only 11th. So, similar to FBK, they are expected to either be in the playoffs or just miss out. For YMCA, we'll see again how they react to the changes similar to FBK. So, we'll, we'll wait and see. I, you know... Kind of famous for having doubted them a little bit last year. I'm not going to make the same mistake, but they do have a lot to prove. Team number seven. We have Orobru, who are here. Orobru? Orobru. I'm going to go with Orobru again. Heard a couple different pronunciations. The Swedes will let me know. An average ranking of a 708, so a good amount of separation in the captain's voting between them and YMCA. The highest ranked finish for them projected was fifth. Two captains believe that, and their lowest projection is 10th, so really not expected to be anywhere near the potential drop zone. They finished in 7th last year, of course previously known as Poggers, lost in round 1 to our champions, our eventual champions in H-Reds in a first round sweep. In terms of departures for them, a depth option in Kusi Makari, who had 4 points in 5 games, moves on to Tadpole in our light division. Ikoski as well, on the defensive side of things, 22 points in 25 games also moves on to Tadpole in the light division. But in terms of additions, they do bring in EA Bunka, presumed depth at the moment, uh, but returning to the org that he once played for, 56 points in 30 games with Sawo last year. They also bring in Migo Buna, who we'll talk about in a moment. But let's start off in goal, of course. Ellie Kamel is there once more. Had a phenomenal 14-3-3 record last year, but only had a 755 save percentage. So... You know, there's that argument of, oh, well, your goalie might not make the most stops, but at the end of the day, if you're winning, who cares? And it could have very much been the argument of Eli Kamel not facing a ton of shots. It can be very difficult for goaltenders when you don't face a ton of shots and you're only facing high quality. Right-hand side, it is going to be Migo Buna on defense. Point-per-game player last year, 30-30 and 30 for Rusty Blades. His defense partner is the captain of the team in Terody, who had 34 points. In 30 games last year. Right hand side is one Jansku. Who had uh, an underrated uh, season last year. 58 points in 30 games. That is very, very impressive. Left hand side is Yakuri. Who had 40 points in 26 games last year. And another name that always gave us trouble. But Nepe, Nepe was there as well. 52 points in 30 games. This is a very high powered offense. For Urubru, heading into this next season, I'm intrigued to see what they can do. Uh, I'd say very much their success in the upcoming year is going to rely quite heavily on what Ellie Kamel can do in this next season. But I can't necessarily disagree with the captains and in, in thinking that this could very well be a playoff team once more. We move on to team number six. And let the controversy begin, perhaps, or maybe not. We have Granite Gaming, an average finish of a 6.83, so again, significantly above Ourobrew. A highest projected finish of 3rd, and a lowest of 10th. Uh, they did finish 10th last year, but that was as Vesa Pampa. They have, of course, been sponsored for this year, and they have had all of the changes. All of them. Let's cover it. <laughs> Defensively, Mr. Osvenskin who was a very impressive goalie last year, 8-10-2 with a 791 save percentage. He returns to the Vexio Lakers in Pro Division. And let's be honest, that's basically what the Vesa Pampa squad last year was as Vexio kind of made the jump up. But Mr. Osvenskin drops back down. Gustafson, who we already saw in FBK, uh, of course, departs the team. Sebi Larson as well for FBK is gone. Uh, Ed Holman, who also returns to the Avexio Lakers, had 11 points in 14 games last year. Hockey Johannes, again, goes back to Vexio. That was 18 points in 30 games. And Nampis, who only had two appearances, uh, had one point, appears to not be re-registered with the team. As you can see, still uh, is not on their list. And another... Uh, departure, one of my favorite names, Katenji, who was there, 34 points in 20 games, also returns to the Vexio Lakers. So there was a mass exodus, but in a way it opened the door for the returns. Of course, Laminens, Furion, and Antonio Manon are back. We'll start off in talking about the goaltenders as well. He is not officially confirmed 
on the site here yet, but I have word that it is uh, Toomborg who is back again, played a few games with Vesta Pompa last year, 4-4-2 record with a 763 save percentage. But again, one of those guys, when he's able to play the majority of the time, has been a fantastic goalie in the past. Laminance, the captain, returns to the club after one season away, uh, resumes his role as captain, had 43 points in 30 games for FBK last year, was voted as the top transfer of the season, the best acquisition. And he's back with Granite, as crazy as that is. And again, Furion follows his defense partner over, had 34 points in 30 games for FBK last year. Furion, again, one of the most prolific scorers under the NHL gamer umbrella that we've ever seen. Of course, when I say that, I'm talking all competitions. That includes the FCL and some of the other tournaments that we have going on, not just the Elite Division, but he has, uh, you know, he has an incredible track record, to say the least. The forwards will start off with Antonio Manon, again, returning to the club after two seasons away uh, with FBK. 54 points in 30 games, and here's the thing. It is a different Antonio Manon than who we saw when he last played for Vesa Pampa slash Granite. When he left this team, he was a defender. And then with FBK, he makes that jump up to forward, and you start to think, okay, is that really going to translate? And obviously, again, 54 points in 30 games, it translated tremendously. He is one of uh, the elite two-way players in this league because of his experience playing on the defensive side. On the left-hand side, we have Ekin, who again hands the captaincy back over to Lehmannens. Uh, 46 points in 30 games last year. Still a very capable player, not only in the Sixes side of things, but of course the one-on-one -on -one side of things as well. He's not the only one on this great team who's in a, a very effective and competitive 1v1 player. And of course their center uh, for the second year in a row, it is Zovi. Had 35 points in 30 games last year. So what is the outlook for this team? I mean, again, the captains say almost slam dunk playoff spot. Uh, a lot of arguments of just how high their ceiling is heading into this season, but absolutely shocking. I mean, we have had some pretty seismic changes in the uh, last couple of seasons, as I've kind of referenced. This has to be one of the biggest. I mean, you know, I think back to when Sibelius went back to Havu and you had Han Salino move up to wing. That was gigantic. Uh, Jay Toro swapping teams. Some gigantic moves have taken place, but in terms of... What has happened with this club from the departure of certain players to their return? I am incredibly excited and again, still just stunning. One of the most stunning off seasons we have uh, we have been you know having the luxury to see play out. And again, we're not done with seeing how it plays out. And that brings us to easily the most controversial choice, I would have to say by the captains, team number five is Sabo Esports. An average rating of a 608, highest projection fourth, their lowest projection is eighth. According to the captains, there wasn't anybody that we got the results back from, uh, which in full transparency was, I believe, 12 out of the 16 captains got back to us. Sabo Esports. In fifth, they finished 11th last season. In terms of departures, we already talked about one. Sokolo moves on to YMCA. Of course, 42 points in 30 games. They also lose Sadapoika, who we talked about, to Northern Ascendancy. And Picari, who had 46 points in 30 games, moves down to Dynastia in our pro division. In terms of arrivals, though, they add Nike between the pipes. They add Avatu and Moja and Yerksa. Look at that, a whole new forward core for this team, and clearly the hype is up there. We'll start off with the goaltender. The presumed starter is Nike between the pipes, taking over for Holtzi, who had an 11, 14, and 5 record last year with a 766 save percentage. He was, and that he being Nike, was previously the starter for H Reds in ECL 11, had an 11, 5, and 2 record with a 756 save percentage. Switched to Tunnel Vision when they were in Pro Division for ECL 11, had an 848 save percentage with a 7 and 1 record. Record, and then last year went back to H Reds as their backup, only played two games, straight sevens for a save percentage, but is now back with Sabo Esports. Again, is their presumed starter. So, uh, technically not up for comeback player of the year, but I am very intrigued to see what Nikkei can do. Uh, you know, was one of those guys that was considered kind of in that higher status when Sin and I first joined up uh, with NHL Gamers. So, again, 
Uh, I feel like the pedigree is there. We'll see if the results are. On defense, we have Wenger on the right-hand side, 17 points in 30 games last season. And the captain, Tombo, on the left-hand side, 16 points in 30 games. On the right, and a player I am so excited to see back in the elite division, they sat out last season, but comeback player of the year could very well be Fatu. 51 points in 30 games for Yipi Voskala in ECL 11 in elite and sat out ECL 12. I, again, I don't know what's going on uh, or what went on there. I don't know if they were just, hey, wanted to sit out. I don't know if the uh, mandatory military service was there or not. I didn't ask. But regardless, uh, I am very happy because this was a you know a, a young player in terms of this league that Sin and I were both very excited about that was just gone. But now he's back. He was the runner-up for Rookie of the Year behind FaZe when FaZe was with Vesa Pampa. Shows you how close that was, that he was in the running with FaZe. And, of course, we know what FaZe has done since. So I think this is a tremendous pickup. On the left-hand side, we get an elite a rookie in Yerksa. Or, yeah, it's 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 Yerska. Yerska. We're going to go with Yerska. Uh, sat out last season as well, but in ECL 11 in Pro Division with Tunnel Vision. Had 69 points in 30 games. So an elite-level pro scorer. We'll see if that can translate uh, to being an elite, elite scorer. And the center is Moja, had 46 points, again, in 29 games for Tunnel Vision, or excuse me, for YMCA last year. So, uh, you know, again, someone who could be a Rookie of the Year favorite, someone who could be a Comeback of the Year favorite, a very solid center, uh, a defense pairing that is, you know, familiar, obviously experienced in terms of playing with one another uh, in NHL 22, or at least the NHL series to begin with. If I seem a little bit frazzled, it's because I am still surprised. Like, you look at that projection and you're just like, hmm. But then you start to look at the pieces and maybe it's not completely out of line. So Sabo, he's projected in fifth. And that brings us to what some people would like to claim as a big four. It could very well be, and the team in fourth is determined to prove that it's a big four. They want to get into that conversation for being amongst the best of the best. We have Goons, who, with an average finish of a 3-5-8, you can tell the gap between the team in fifth and the team in fourth in terms of the voting. The highest placement for Goons first, the lowest sixth. They finished in fifth last year, losing to Feriastad in six games in round one. In terms of departures, they lose VP on the defensive side of things, who had 23 points in 30 games. He's moved on to Havu, and we already talked about Yergali, who moved on to IQ. But the additions, good lord, Jay Toro has joined Goons. One of those seismic shift moves. Can't believe this. Ilmari has also joined up, but is projected to be depth. Had 26 points in 30 games for Yippie Vaskala last season, but a phenomenal defender that they have as an insurance policy. And they also add Leitinen as a forward option as well. And talking about the goaltending, Finn Kona is the man. 19-9-2 last season, just a 781 save percentage, but again, one of the most prolific goaltenders in NHL gamer history. The defensive side of things, I mentioned him already, it's Jay Toro. His third team in three seasons, though, goes from Phila to Havu, and now to Goons. I, I'm very surprised by the move, because this is a defender that you could argue would make every team better in this league. You know, if you talk about that H-Reds defense, maybe it's every team but one. We'll see what that ends up being. He had 36 points in, uh, well, no, yeah, he did. He had 36 points in 30 games last year. It's actually a couple of guys who had 36 points in 30 games. Uh, but yeah, Jay Toro is a tremendous improvement. And the left-hand side is Viba. Again, uh, we call him the young superstar. 2008, that's a birth year. In case you wanted to feel old as hell like I do. I'm not even at 30 yet, and I feel old as hell. Uh, this kid has a playoff hat trick under his belt. It is ridiculous. Had 21 points in 30 games last year. Very excited to see what he can do. And then we talk about the forwards on the right-hand side. Leitinen is there. He is replacing Nurgli. Had 36 points in 30 games with IQ last year as an elite rookie. The left wing is last year's Rookie of the Year runner-up, as mentioned. Or not the runner-up, outright the Rookie of the Year, excuse me. Uh, and that is Piku Roger, who had 57 points. In 30 games. 
craziness. So excited to see what his sophomore year brings to us. And then there's the captain in Kriketsi, who had 53 points in 30 games. So a decent amount of pressure on Leitinen. Uh, but in the past, when we've said, boy, we don't know if this guy will be able to really step up, uh, we've seen players on the best teams be able to do just that. So uh, I'm not expecting a poor season from Lightning at all. Like I said, Goons, their outlook, bottom line, second round minimum after falling short in round one last year to FBK. This is a team, like I said, that almost finds themselves where H-Reds were just a few short years ago, or a couple of seasons ago, however you want to phrase it, where this is clearly a squad that has the potential to make that step up to the top rung, the top level of the elite division. But will they? You know, I look at that FBK roster that has recently fallen apart, and I still say they had the chance to jump up to that top rung, and unfortunately they couldn't keep things together before they could. We'll see what happens with goons. It does bring us to the big three, and they still have to be considered the big three for the moment, although I will say again, Goons is average at a 3.58, the team in third at a 3.41. So opinions for the captains are close. We have former champions in Havu Gaming in third, highest finish first, the lowest fifth. I mean, again, almost a virtual certainty to be able to make the playoffs. Uh, they finished third last year, they lost to H Reds in round two in six games. Certainly, the catapult that H Reds needed. In terms of departures, we just mentioned Jay Toro, but they also lose Puanzo again. Now, Puanzo had 57 points in 30 games. He sat out the year before, but was really good the year before that. Not entirely sure what's there or what kind of relationship management there is. Maybe it's personalities butting heads. I don't know. But I look at Puanzo, who goes to Yippie Vascula, and I said I wanted to mention Yippie Vascula. Puanzo, Auntie, Indy, Sile, Sakam, and Kazu and Goal. Um, no offense to those in the pro division. Uh, yeah, God, that team should be back in the elite division next season. <laughs> Prove me wrong, boys, for better or worse. But uh, that team looks ridiculous. But... So does this Havu squad as they add VP, as mentioned, and they also add Wiegelson up top. We'll start off in goal. We know it's going to be another split between Hansalino and Sibelius. Hansu had an 11-3-2 record last year with an unbelievable 847 save percentage, and Sibe was even better at 11-3-0 and an 860 elite goaltending. For the Havu squad here heading into the season. They are both spectacular. Defensively, we see the return of Vilikun, who was up for comeback player of the year after sitting out in ECL 12. Last played for Havu in ECL 11, had 25 points in 30 games. And Nasu Stelia will be the left side defender, 22 points in 30 games. VP, who had uh, 23 points in 30 games of Goons, will be their depth defenders. So Vilikun and Nasu Stelia are back. As far as the forwards are concerned, Captain Flyer Kungan, still on that right wing, had 56 points in 30 games. Again, still one of the best players in, I, I don't care how you judge it geographically, one of the best players in competitive sixes, hands down. The new left wing is Wiegelson, and what a spot this is for him. 45 points in 28 games with Sawa last year, which was phenomenal. And I think he could be... Uh, this year's, uh, you know, I look back to Atreds, he could pretend, he could potentially be this year's Villapoika. Villapoika, you know, a little bit different of a track record um, as compared to Wiegelson, but I still, I still say, you know, I see a top team make an addition like this. I see someone who had scored at a pretty high rate on a lesser team. I'm intrigued, but it is worth noting, this is the third straight season with a change at left wing. Like I mentioned, they went from Puanzo to Hansu, back to Puanzo, and now to Wiegelson. It's clear that they view that left-hand side as the problem position. We'll see if this is the answer that Havu needed to get back to championship contention. And of course, the center, Dominointi, had 50 points in 26 games last year. So, Havu. Again, a phenomenal team. Always championship contenders. I will never not consider Havu a championship contender. Which brings us to the big two. Some might even call them, and I, I almost have to say so, because again, Havu at a 3-4-1 average in terms of the captain's voting. The team in two was at a 1-7-5. So again, you see a gap. 
and the team at one was at a 166. These were the two best teams as voted on by the captains. Who's going to be there in that two spot? Who's going to be in the one? The team in second, former champions in Fralunda HC. That does mean H-Reds walk into the season as the number one team, and rightfully so as defending champions for Fralunda. In terms of departures, none. In terms of arrivals, none. This is the same team. Granted, Tactors is their depth option change, but this is the same club, and they are looking for revenge. Cape in goal, last season's goalie of the year, 28-0-2 record with an unbelievable 875 save percentage. Right D, Loimu, 35 points in a full season last year. Tamu, 28 points in a full season last year. It was his first with Philadelphia. I hate to say it, the Marion Hosa of the Elite Division. You think back to the... Uh, you know, to the 08 09 uh, Penguins Red Wings teams. Uh, Marion Hosa just ended up being on the wrong team in terms of winning the title. <laughs> so I feel sorry for Tamu there, but he could very well end up with a championship here this season. Right wing, of course, who else would it be? It is Eki, voted best forward last season, had 82 points in a full season. Left wing is Plea Maker, 73 points in a full season. And the captain, or the former captain, I should say, Kape, now representing the team as the captain. But it is Potsloff, 60 points in 28 games. Bottom line is, much like Havu, uh, whether or not you want to call them Philadelphia, whether or not they're representing for Lunda, they are always a championship favorite, and I am very, very intrigued to see just what they do this season. It won't surprise anybody if they return to the mountaintop, but there is our defending champions who have something to say about that. It is H-Reds. The only changes in backup goaltending, again, swapping out Nike for our Ramsil. Uh, in terms of this team, it is still the same. Uh, again, in terms of that average rating, a 166, their highest projected finish was first, their lowest was third. Uh, both for Lunda and H-Reds projected to finish first by five different uh, votes. So, again, uh, an, an interesting one there. But, of course, again, they won the Elite Championship, sweeping Philadelphia in the finals last year. We look at Faye's 23-4-1 with an 8-22 save percentage. Was, if I'm not mistaken, voted a uh, playoff MVP by his team. Defensively, King of Apes, 27 points in 30 games, but someone else who has been known uh, to go absolutely banana in terms of putting up points. Domi, who is coming off of the best run of virtual hockey as a defenseman that we may have ever seen. Uh, in terms of playoff MVP, it's not often it would go to a defenseman. Domi was ungodly, <laughs> especially against Philadelphia, uh, which was well-deserved. And he had 31 points in 30 games last year. Again, I mentioned about top defenders. These two right now can, you know, can, can lay claim to that, to that title for now. We'll see how long uh, they're able to fend off some fantastic challengers to that title. Right wing is, of course, Nicky Daniels. He was the face of the last season, and rightfully so. 79 points in 30 games. In terms of talking about his game, we've seen the constant evolution of his defensive play. He is a phenomenal 1v1 player as well. He is one of the premier stars of this elite division. Villapoika. You know, you look at his stats and you look at someone and we said, okay, super experienced. ECL season two was his debut. ECL three, granted the league had a different structure, but clearly this was a super talented player. Comes over from Vesa Pampa, 38 points in 30 games. What is he going to be able to do? And again, 80 points in 30 games, 27 in 14 playoff games. Unbelievable player. And Benito as the captain uh, had 86 points. In 30 games, you could argue, and some certainly do, that he was maybe deserving more so of the uh, top forward award last year, and he'll be looking to lay claim to that as well. But you don't have to worry too much about a top forward award when your team won their first championship together. So that is it. This about hour long journey has concluded. There you have the full season preview for what we have going on here. Again, all the information that you need and so much more is right here on NHLGamer.com. Again, we hope that you join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Twitch.tv slash NHLGamer. Make sure, of course, to follow us on all the socials, Twitter, Instagram, and the whole deal. We are so excited to be back for what promises to be 
an absolutely incredible season. Again, the first season of two with this new combination in terms of having the winter, the summer, and a grand champion at the end of it. The bragging rights are that much higher. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, you can follow me everywhere at Tukey24, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, at Twitch, basically everywhere. Sin. That is C-Y-N-F-T-W, Prod, or Productions, depending on the platform. Make sure to check him out as well. We thank you for supporting us. We hope you're as excited as we are. We'll see you all very soon for the start of the ECL Winter League here in ECL 2022.